Hey, Crazy Will here today, and today we're going to be talking about how to fix a Kindle Fire. Stay tuned. Hey, Crazy Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show, coming back at you guys today, and today we're going to be talking about fixing a Kindle Fire. Fire. I got these from a buddy of mine. It's mainly what we're going to be talking about today is how to crack one of these open and trade out parts. This one keeps rebooting. Tried to do some diagnostic on it and I think something's just wrong with it in general. This one has a broke screen. This was my buddy's kid's Kindle fires. He talked to me about them and see if I can fix them because if you have one with a good screen and one that has a busted screen and the board works fine, everything works fine, and you have one that... I think the board's bad in it. I honestly feel that the board's bad in it. I could swap out some parts and get you one working Kindle Fire. So I figured it would be a pretty cool video to show off, you know, how to take these things apart and mess with them. And this is not my first Kindle Fire. They're um, actually not too bad to take apart, a lot better than the iPads. They're actually really good tablets, especially if you're a Prime member. Really, like I said, guys, I'm not sponsored. I just, I like this. It's cheap tablets, normally uh, 50 bucks. You can get these on sale for $35 around Christmas time or during Amazon day. He just wanted to see if he could salvage out of these two. So we have one with a broken screen, and one I'm assuming is a bad board. Without further ado, let's go over to my workbench. I got an overhang setup that I did and I'm gonna show you how to take these things apart and see if we can make one of these working. Okay, I got one that keeps rebooting and I got one with a bad screen that's cracked. Obviously you can see it's really cracked, really messed up. This one keeps rebooting, but the screen is good. And this one has a cracked screen. I'm gonna take the board out of this one and put it into this one. All right, so I'm gonna start with the crack screen. I'm gonna put this the other one off to the side. What I'm gonna do is you're gonna take a guitar pick, which this one's seen better days. And what you're gonna do is, I like to go right in by the volume button here. I'm gonna push, so, and then you just follow it around to the corner. Once you get a corner, bam, get all the way around here. So once you get all the way around, that should come right off. We don't need that anymore. We'll throw that out of the way. Okay, so first thing before you do anything, we want to disconnect the battery. And you, what you want to do is gently go underneath and push up right there. And then pop it up. And just push it away. The first thing I like to do is go for that ribbon cable. That's where we're going right here. We're going to peel have these nice strong little metal tweezers. I'm gonna go for that tape. Now I noticed the yellow tape is just tearing apart as I pull it. Okay, from here, we're gonna take this little piece and we're gonna flick it up. And that flicks up. And now if you take the tweezers and you gently come under it and pull up away from this, you don't want to rip it. Well, actually on this screen it doesn't really matter, but on, I, I would stay careful all the way. I like to go for the power button, and the way we're gonna do this is, I like to take the tweezer, there is glue holding this down, and I like to take the tweezer and just get right in between it, and pop it off, and just be careful, because right there is the connector, and we just want to take, we just want to take it off, we just want to do that, and while we're here, we might as well pop out the camera just to get it up. And it has a little piece connected to it. I just go ahead and it's not a wire or nothing. It's just like a weird piece of tape. Pull that off right there. And then the next part that I want to go for is the volume control. You can see it right there. That's the volume control. I'm going to take that off. So we're going to go at it at an angle. We'll just take the tweezer and go down and get under it. Just pop it off. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're hard. All right, so that's up. We got that off. Now, this is probably gonna be the hardest part of the whole entire thing. This, this is your touch controller. So what we wanna do is first take this off right here. This little piece of tape. And I just like to put it on there for now. So I'll probably use it later. 
Now what we're going to do, and if you could see, I'm going to flick that up and I'm going to gently, we don't want to tear this. If we mess this up, that's it for this device. And we're going to get under here and I'm going to lift that out. And if you could see, that piece is out now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, again, my little prior tool that I used to get the battery off. It has a nice little plastic edge. And what I'm gently going to do is get under here and gently push its glue. And that pops up just like that. And that's how we're going to attach it to the next one for touch. Okay? And what we want to do while we're here, to keep these two separated, you want to put the volume button over the touch part. Just because once we undo the screws, we're going to try and pry it up. Alright, so what we're going to do from here is we're going to remove the screws. We have, it's a regular standard tiny screwdriver, 1.5 by 45. Alright, so what we're going to do from here is we're going to undo the screw here. Put that off to the side. Another screw right there. Put that over here. And then there is another screw under the sticker, which I did not see the first time I took one of these apart. And then, we're going to go for this screw right here. And then this screw right here, right there. Okay, so it's a total of five screws. All right, what we're going to do is you're going to lift up on the board like so. We're going to follow it down to the speaker. We're not going to disconnect the speaker because there's no point in it. You just It's easy enough just to take the glue and just pop up under it. There you go. All right, as you can see, now the board is free. So that's the whole board with the speaker. This is the good one. We're going to put it off to the side for now. And we're going to repeat the same steps with the other one and take the board out. All right, so we're going to move this one out of the way. And then this is the one that keeps rebooting. I'm going to go ahead and take this apart and come back to you when I have the board out. Note to oneself, get a new guitar pick because this thing has had it. Alright, for you skeptics right there that are going to say to me, oh it wasn't rebooting, just fix it. You could see something went wrong here. I don't know if one of his kids spilt water, but you can see there's problems there. Looks like burnout right here on that chip. Something is going wrong here. So you can see there's damage on the board and there's damage underneath this shield here. And on top of it, it looks really burnt out. So it's a good sign that this board wasn't going to live again. It looks like there was severe damage. Okay, so this screen's bad. This screen is good. I'm going to get the good board going to put it into place. Before you put the board in, this makes your life a lot easier. I'm going to take the ribbon cable to the screen and I am going to slide it into place before I put it in. And then shut the door right there. And it should cover that white line. There's a little white line in there that shows you. So that's shut. And what I want to do is get the touch this is another quick tip that will really help you with the touch. What you, you want to do is you want to get the touch in first. This data cable in position first. Again, it has that white line. Put the board down in place. There is a little rubber nub that has a nipple at the top here. Let me show you. That might come off. It actually looks like this. And it has a nub. So this is the other side of the board. This is the little nub I'm talking about. That can get under the board. Make sure it's on there and it's facing up. Mine was faced to the side. I had to switch it to face it up to lay the board down. So that is an important little uh, tidbit because you'll wonder why the board ain't laying down and it's probably this little nub. Looks like I got everything laid into place. So now we're going to play with this ribbon cable and it's just easier to come at it at an angle before you put that piece back down because you really don't want to bend that too much. 
much. Okay, that's in position. I'm going to close that and I'm going to gently push this down into place. Now your touch and your LCD screen are back in place. I'll take this yellow piece of sticker, place it over there. I don't know if it's some type of shielding or not. Best to put it back the way you found it. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is the volume controls. We're going to try and line them up into position. It's just supposed to lay on that like so. Boom. And then the power button. Boom. Push the camera down in there. Boom. Okay. Next, let's put the screws back in. The five screws. Middle one first. Just to make sure everything's tightened down. So I got one, two, three, four, five screws. Everything's put back together. We're going to put the speaker into place. And it just gently folds into here. And then the old glue should hold it back into place. If you feel like you need to get some glue and put it in there, go right ahead. All right, and then we're gonna connect the power. And we're gonna gently push that down. And it looks like everything should work. All right, so before we put the back on, the back's not on yet, but before we do that, we're gonna see if this bad boy works. And if you go up to the top here and you hold down on this for 10 seconds, it should power on, but I think this battery is stone dead. So what I'm gonna do is before I put the back on, I'm gonna throw it on my charger and let it charge for a little bit and then come back to it. Okay, so I'm putting it on the charger there. We're gonna come back to this in a minute and see how this works out. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes and there's our screen. You can actually see that it's working. So the board was good, the screen was good out of the two and we just replaced it and now you know, I saved my buddy, I don't know, 50 bucks for now. I mean, not bad. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this off the charger. And I picked the two out of the best containers. I like this one, even though it's got a little of the damage on it. All we're going to do now is we're going to start at the top here. And I'm going to line up the buttons. And we're going to push it back together. And sometimes this corner just doesn't like to work where the, the card's supposed to go. So I just open it up. I just push right in between there and just make sure it's shut. And what you want to do is just check the edges. Make sure it's all solid. All right. As you can see, it's still working. Um, what you want to do now is you want to check the volume. It's going up and down. Make sure those buttons are in place correctly so those work. You want to check the power button. Turns on. Boom. That is working correctly. Out of his two Kindles, he'll have one left. What I'm going to do now is hook some power to it. Let it sit there. It usually takes about two hours for it to charge. And then after two hours, uh, I'll come back, make sure it's holding a charge, play with it a little bit, make sure that the battery wasn't corrupted on this thing. If not, I think I can salvage another battery from another friend's Kindle. So it's only a $50 Kindle. I mean, you know, it's up to you guys what you feel like, if it's worth taking your time. I mean, it's pretty quick to take apart and fix, especially if you bought two for the kids and one of the kids destroyed it. But you know, like I said, that's nice, nice fixed up, ready to go. I'm sure he'll be happy with it. All right, so unfortunately the one with the broken screen, we're just gonna toss, but this one, and we can see we can turn it on, is working. So this is a working tablet now. I can give this back to my buddy and at least he got one out of two and they're pretty inexpensive. You can buy new ones if this isn't something you want to do, but he wanted a tablet for himself. He bought his kids the new ones and he asked me, hey, is there something you could do? And he showed me them and I said, yo man, I could fix that for you and get that working for you. So he's gonna be really thrilled to get this tablet up and working 
that way he has one now the kids have one and you can see the touch is working everything's working and now he can enjoy his little tablet so that's it for this one guys I mean you know it's they're inexpensive tablets you know might not be worth it for you but if you got two of them that are broken this could help you make sure you like and subscribe down below and remember you can do anything and I mean anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys! Wow, they really put these together like crap. This one's actually glued to the top instead of the bottom. You thought I was a picture, didn't you? Trey, like, and subscribe. Do me a favor already.